Good morning, everyone. My name is Pastor Bobby, and I'll be your host throughout today's service. We'd love to know who is gathering together in this space. Where are you watching from? Is this your first time joining with us? Could you just take a second and introduce yourself in the chat box or in the comment section? We would love to welcome you. Our service today is going to be about 45 minutes in length. We're going to sing songs of praise and worship. We're going to read scripture together, pray together. And Pastor John Mark and some of our students uh, here from Calvary Youth are going to be bringing us our teaching today. Let's start off by singing some songs of worship together.
just the only one who could ever say Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you, oh, we live for you Holy, there is no one like you There is none beside
Here are your announcements for this week. We are promoting the registration for our Kids Camp Monumental this summer. This is for all kids aged 6 to 11, so going into grade 1 and going into grade 6. It's a full day day camp, July 11th to 15th. Camp is a week-long time for kids to have a ton of fun, but also through that fun to get spiritually formed and grow in their relationship with God. Your kids will not want to miss out, so you can head to our website, calvaryptbo.church, and you can register today. Registration is also open for our All Crew celebration, happening on June 5th after the service. All Crew is what we call everybody here that serves. And so for everyone that is serving, plus your family, we are going to have a celebration together, celebrating all that God has done in and through us over the last eight months. Normally we would gather the last Sunday of the month at All Crew for teaching, for prayer together, for alignment, to encourage each other, but we're going to kick this off with a celebration. So on June 5th, after the service, we're going to have bouncy castles, there's going to be cotton candy, games, we're going to have a barbecue, there's going to be an award ceremony uh, where we celebrate people that have been serving so well. Again, this is for everyone who serves in your family, June 5th, following the service, but we do need you to register. So please do that at calvaryptbo.church. Our kids giving campaign for our new kids area is so close to being finished. We have now met 94% of our goal, and so we're just $900 away from having enough money to raise that $15,000, which was kind of our half of the deal. It's going to be partnered up so that we actually have $25,000 so that we can just, to the best of our ability, make that kids space here on campus so wonderful for our kids. So if you want to give to that, that last $900, you can direct that in your giving. Just memo it kids giving campaign and it will go directly to that. Now, for those who call Calvary Church home, there's three ways that you can give. First, you can give online at calvaryptbo.church. Just click on the giving tab at the top of the page. You can also send an e-transfer to donations at calvaryptbo.church. Or you can drop it off the white giving boxes at the back of the auditorium or any time during the week at the main campus office. Now, would you grab your Bibles, some pens and some notes. Be ready to take some notes as we listen to Pastor John Mark and our students bring us our teaching today. I've been thinking of this phrase, living life on purpose for the last few years. And I, every time I go to pray, every time I spend time talking with God, uh, and every time I get an opportunity to speak, I feel like he leads me in this one direction to simplify our faith to make it accessible, to make it easy, and to help everyone get to this place where they realize that a life of purpose is available for all of us. I was thinking about how can we communicate this? How can we get us back to the basics? And how can we focus on being committed to love, committed to prayer, committed to our relationship with God so that it overflows and helps those around us? And because I really truly believe that several times a day we have a chance at peacemaking, at praying, at loving, that actually helps bring the kingdom of God down to earth. And it doesn't have to be this grand, big thing that we do. You know, but I think sometimes when we talk about living lives that plant good seed, where we are planting seed that are, is good and it's actually going to help people point them towards God, or about listening to the voice of God or walking in obedience, I think it can be really intimidating for people sometimes. So today our goal is to leave you feeling like you can live a life on purpose that is accessible to you, that you can walk in obedience to God, and that it's not a hard thing. And so as we were thinking about how to do this, I thought it'd be an awesome opportunity for us to have a conversation with a few students who are doing their best to honor God. And I think you're going to learn a lot about what it looks like to live a life on purpose every single day. All right, I'm here with three of our students, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves. They're going to tell you their name, their school they go to. No, not their school. They're just their age. And then what your favorite thing about Peterborough is. Okay, let's start with you, Jake. Hey, my name's Jake. I am in grade 11. And my favorite thing about Peterborough is the Canoe Museum. Hi, I'm Keegan. I'm in grade 9. And favorite thing about Peterborough is Little Lake. I'm Amy. I'm in grade 10. And my favorite thing about Peterborough is Corthed area. There, we paid them to say that. So Peterborough, if you're watching, we like our money. <laughs> So here we go, we're gonna have a conversation about what it looks like to live a life on purpose. And our first question, I think, Jake, you're gonna open this up for us. And we're gonna talk about this all together. Um, but have you ever found the idea of walking in obedience to God every day intimidating? Um, yeah, I think it's not necessarily easy for anyone um, all the time. Um, I think especially with, for me personally, the struggles and like temptations of the world these days, especially with phones and everything. Um, it just makes it very difficult 
obviously to like be obedient like every single day and just like being around friends at school um, people who aren't necessarily super strong in their faith I think it has influence on you just naturally even if you don't realize it so I think um, yeah it is pretty easy to struggle um, walking in obedience every day agreed I think it's very difficult sometimes at times temptation gets the best of us and it can lead to some not so good things and although we try our best we fall short sometimes so yeah it definitely can be difficult yeah yeah um especially in school a lot of people have a lot of opinions that ne don't necessarily like to keep them to themselves right. so sometimes they just say things and inside you're like well this is me and this is what i think but i'm not going to say it and it's really hard because yeah. you kind of want to say it but like you don't know what they're going to say to you yeah exactly yeah. Yeah, I think it's so, it, I think just being brutally honest, right? Like it is intimidating sometimes when we look at it and we, we're talking about this and hopefully through our conversation, we can help show people that it's not this crazy hard thing to do sometimes. And sometimes we just gotta be okay with maybe failing sometimes, maybe not being universally loved by everybody, right? Like we have to be okay with some of those things. I think one of the things for me that, um, that kind of made it less intimidating was realizing that God isn't looking for us to be amazing. Like he's not looking for us to be perfect. He's not looking for us to be amazing. He's just really looking for us to be available. He's looking for us to be available and understanding that we don't actually have to be always ready. Have you guys ever faced that where you're like, oh, I just might not be ready for that. Have you ever thought about that before? Yeah. How, when it comes to like, when it comes to that, when you're navigating like, oh, am I ready for being obedient or like not? How do you wrestle through that personally? Anybody? Yeah, I think uh, being ready, like, for, like, obedience is, like, it's not exactly like, the easiest thing. I always feel like um, sometimes, I don't know if I want to say, like, not, like, like, good enough to do a certain thing that God's prompted me to do, but, like, I feel like sometimes there's a lot of doubt in mind um, for, like, say, like, God's asking you to do something. It's not the easiest thing to be obedient when you don't have the confidence or, like, you don't think you have the ability, like, and you don't think you're ready to actually, like, fill out whatever God wants you to do, I think that's a struggle for me and a lot of people just to not feel like like this isn't for me even if God's telling me it or I just there's like a lot of doubts in mind I think yeah yeah fear of failing and being disappointed in myself and not following through with what God might have asked me to do mm -hmm. it can be difficult like it's a struggle to know whether I should or shouldn't and then when I fail and choose the wrong thing I kind of feel a bit guilty for that and it leads to like a bit of doubt in myself later on right yeah I think leading off of that especially like setting like Goals. I feel like setting goals for yourself is always, I've always struggled with it, and like, say like settling, like, or setting goals to like, I don't know, say read the Bible personally, um, to a, uh, to a certain spot, or at least to really like, sink into it deeper, I think it's just, it gets discouraging when you realize maybe the goal is fading away, and then that's what leads right. you to think you're like, you're not like, ready, if you want to say that. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that sometimes we can get hung up on those things, right? We set these goals and we kind of create these patterns for ourselves, and we think that we have to do something a certain way because that's what the world kind of tells us. But the reality is I think sometimes like uh, Christ, being a Christian, we're, we're a square trying to fit into a circle hole, right? You know, that saying is probably, I probably butcher, but, butchered it, but the reality is we don't necessarily fit the mold. So the life that God is calling us to isn't one that matches what the world has set out for us, right? It's not one that uh, is fast paced. It's actually slowed down. It's not one that needs to achieve lots of things. It's really spending time with God so we can love him so that in turn we can love those around us and be disciples who make disciples. So I think that's super helpful just to remember that God isn't looking for us to be amazing. He's looking for us to be available. And God always has and always will use broken, unqualified people to make a difference in this world. So I find just freedom in knowing that, right? I think we can find freedom because we know we're going to mess up and knowing that we're not going to hit everything that we set out to achieve, but understanding that God can still use me anyways. Uh, and my job is to walk in obedience. So, uh, Amy, what, what do you think? What are some things that you do personally, maybe, to prepare yourself to be ready to respond to when God prompts you? Well, um, lots of praying, definitely lots of praying, but sometimes being patient and um, just allowing for him to lead me because sometimes I want to just keep like pushing and sometimes I want to keep going. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I think of this and I'm like, oh, maybe I should do it, but maybe it's not the right time or anything. So just to be patient with that, to allow for it to flow. Yeah, it's good because it doesn't always happen instantly, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I like to just remind myself that God has a plan for me and that that plan is going to be great and I'm going to prosper from it. And that, you know, through thick and thin, God is with me. And it kind of prepares me m mentally for what God has planned, just knowing that whatever it is, whatever happens, whatever the outcome will be, it's going to be amazing and that it's going to be good for my life. Yeah, for sure. And I think uh, for me personally, I think uh, listening to like just worship music and also like maybe like reading in the background or um, reading over scripture, or just verses that are important to me, I think that helps a lot. I find whenever I'm listening to um, any sort of worship music, uh, I just find it so easy for me to connect with God during that. Um, one of the biggest ways for me to ever feel God's presence is through worship. And it's the way I feel it most frequently and most like, I don't know what word to use, but just like in the best way I can feel it. And uh, so I think it's like really easy for me to like hear what God's trying to tell me um, right. throughout um, worship and even praying during worship. I think just that's the biggest thing for me, yeah. I think. What do you guys, do you guys have any like patterns or systems in your day that you you do regularly? Maybe not every single day, but on a regular basis where like, you know, I'm gonna wake up and pray here or at some point during the day or do devotions. What would that look like for any of you guys? It's pretty basic, but I try to pray at least once a day, and more if I can, but it's like, it's really important, I think, to pray to God and just ask him for guidance on anything we do. Because he's, he's always there for us, he always hears our prayers, and it might not always feel like he's gonna instantly respond, but he does hear our prayers and he is there for us. So it's like the one thing I try to always do. Right. Yeah, I think prayer is pretty huge. Um, especially, uh, I try to at least thank God uh, during prayer. Like I just thank him for at least everything. And even if it gets repetitive, like I try to thank him quite a bit for everything uh, he's given me uh, in life and just mm -hmm. the, all the, the goods he's given me. Um, so yeah, that's a big thing. And I try to probably do that once a day at least. Um, I normally try to do that in the morning before yeah. I start my day, just thank him for everything he's gonna give me that day or has already given me. I think that's one of the, the big things for me that I try to do a lot. Yeah, that's good. What does it look like for you, Amy? Um, my life is sometimes really busy mm -hmm. and sometimes you forget. And honestly, you just, sometimes I just have to, every day or once in a while, I just have to stop and, and pray to him. And just maybe I have to go in my room, sit down, take some notes or whatever, just to take the time so that I give him the time because we're going to get so caught up in life that sometimes we forget. Sometimes we're going to pray that little prayer and then we just move on. So I think that's it's important. Yeah, I, I think sometimes to help us get prepared to be able to be actually obedient to what God is prompting of us, we actually have to get to this place where our focus is on being with God, not so much doing things. Because I think we can get hung up there because often that's kind of how our world acknowledges people doing things well, right? They are doing things that you can really see. But the thing with, you know, being a Christian and in our relationship with God is often it's hidden. It's the hidden things that no one else sees that actually brings about that big change and actually allows us to walk confidently where God is actually asking us to, to go. Um, you know, and I really do think what we value, we make time for in our lives, right? So, you know, if we want to have this value where we walk in obedience, we actually have to make time to be with God so that he can speak to us. Uh, I remember being so frustrated when I, was, when I was younger. We were talking about this earlier. Like, how many of us can say we hear from God regularly? Like, he speaks to me. He writes in my journal for me. Like, that doesn't happen right? Like we're being real. Maybe one time in my life where I can say that that happened where he spoke to me. But more often than not, it's quiet and it's small and we actually have to be still in order to hear what he wants us to say, what he wants to say to us. And I mean, when we look at the life of Jesus, when we look at how he got himself ready to do what God was asking of him, we see him withdrawing from the crowds, spending time alone with God to realign his heart with God's heart, to hear what God had him for him, store in for him, and to be able to walk in that obedience that even he had to, because he was fully human too. He had to endure the same temptation that we had to. And he had to have that time where he spent time with the Father in order to move forward. You know, I, I think just a simple thing I'll add is like something that I do that it can be simple to help prepare me to be willing to respond to what God is prompting of me. Um, like just for an easy example, like going into a store. One of the things I do is before I walk into a store or go to a meeting, whether I'm spending time with one of you guys or a different student or an adult or whoever, I make sure that before I go into that thing, I have at least 30 seconds where I can pray to God and say, God, 
um, you know, speak to me, give me wisdom, give me words to ask, give me, help me be able to focus on this person and push back my agenda or anything that I have on my mind and be able to be fully present so that you can use me. And I found that just by being able to practice that on a regular basis, God has constantly been prompting things in my heart and being able to help other people because I'm focused on them rather than my own issues, if that makes sense. So Keegan, what do you think? Let's, let's move to our next question. You know, what does it look like in your life to be obedient to God every day? It's a tough question. Uh, being obedient to God to me just means like following his words and it can be as simple as like checking in with a friend, you know, seeing if they're okay. Uh, I do have one friend that I like to talk to a lot. I like to make sure that they're okay and that they're feeling all right. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, just checking in with them makes me feel like I'm following God's word because God wants us always to be, you know, better people and to help others. So yeah. checking with friends, making sure that even, I, I like to ask a friend sometimes, you know, do you think that I've maybe been in a bad mood today? And making sure that I check in on, on myself too. Mm -hmm. Uh, just making sure that like everyone I know is feeling okay. Right. What about you, Amy? What does it look like in your life to be obedient to God? Um, just to allow for God to be in me and that, you know, whatever I say, whatever I do, it's what God would want. It's not what I would want. But also just to be social with everyone. Like when I go to work, um, I ask almost about everyone, how everyone's doing. And then we get into a conversation and we talk about everything about their life. And it just, it's, it's for them to know that I, I care, mm -hmm. but it's also for me to know that I can do that to, yeah. to people. And so. Yeah, I think little conversations like that really can go mm -hmm. a long way, especially for people um, who like, like straight up just aren't having the best year or going through things like maybe depression or anxiety. It really means a lot the little things like that for someone to really talk to them and ask them how they are. Um, for me, I think just being different throughout your day, um, just not just sitting there like everyone else, it kind of builds off of what you said, Amy, but being different in school and just uh, one thing I wrote down, which is I think pretty big, at least at school, and it's kind of something that's overseen by just a lot of people, but just as simple as swearing, like it's something that I think as Christians it really like like, I think it's a big thing for us because it's something that's very small but also very big and an easy way that we can be different. And it also rubs off on people too. Um, many of my friends, uh, I've literally said, like told me before that they like don't swear as much strictly because I don't. And it, it sounds kind of funny, but like in reality, like I thought about it and I was like, that's actually pretty cool to think that like that actually happens and it's actually like fading off on people just because I choose not to. So I think it's really easy to, uh, like just small things like that, just being different and not just going like with the crowd, um, like at school or even at work yeah, and stuff like yeah, that. I, I like that a lot. Yeah, standing out in your own way, you know, and not like rubbing off on people, like you said, like mm -hmm. becoming like a new normal almost. Uh, yeah. When you rub off on someone, they're gonna see that and they're gonna be like, you know what, he looks happy. I wanna be like him. Yeah. yeah. Like we have influence a lot. Like I tried to say like earlier, like everyone, even that like non Christians have influence on us, which might not be the best thing all the time um, in every way, but we also have influence on them too, which is something that we might forget, but it's really important, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, I think, I think the big thing, right, is walking in obedience every day doesn't mean that every single day we have to go do something crazy huge, right? Doesn't mean that we have to go and start a non-profit, you know, thing to help homeless people, or we don't have to go and become missionaries, something crazy like that, right? It can literally be, like you're saying, Amy, just being aware of the people around me, making sure that I genuinely care about what's going on in their lives, making sure that they know that I care about them, because that's a way that we can love them well, right? It's as simple as that sometimes, I think. You know, it could be sending a text to a friend, like this morning, I, I was in the shower, we're not gonna talk about that too long, like we did earlier, um, but I was in the shower and I just felt like a friend was going through something and I was remembering the situation and I felt like, I need to text that person. So I got out and I texted that person and said like, you know, I'm praying for you. I, I'm so sorry that you're going through this. And like, I just, you know, know I'm here for you. And you know, it wasn't this crazy big thing, but I was just responding to this prompt in my heart. Um, could be me, could be God, and we'll talk about that next. But just making, just being obedient, like just doing that thing, taking the time to stop what I need to do and getting ready for the day and taking a moment to uh, see someone, what they're going through, right? I think we see that so much with like just Jesus's life is he's always willing to see and be aware of what was going on around him. And he always had time for people, just no matter what he was going through, he was willing to put his selfish ambition to the side in order to help 
everyone else and what they were going through, which I think is, is so cool. Um, <clears throat> when it comes to being obedient in our lives, do any of you guys have like a story of a specific moment where you know like you responded to a God prompt in your life and were actually able to like see something happen out of that? What about you, Amy? Um, so definitely about starting up Alpha, um, Connor came to me and asked me if it would, I would be interested because he went to the same school as I did. Yeah. And I just feel it was, it was a wonderful opportunity to, to take the step, even if you're like scared or even if in the moment you're like, this would be really cool, um, to take the step because most people at my school, because it's a public school, most people don't know God and most people do question those things. And most people, like I've seen a lot of people at Crestwood and they do have their own problems and honestly bringing this could could help them and they they could feel more safe um, at school but also more safe um, with God and could grow closer to him yeah. and get to know him yeah and alpha like we've been trying to help get it set up at your school for for years now we kept getting rejected so like what was the moment for you to not just have like this is a good idea to happen but you're like no you know what I feel like this is something I need to help make make take place um, I well when he when they first said like I don't know if it's gonna happen I just I knew that that it sh we should try to make it happen I knew that it needed to happen and I feel like when I had that when he had that idea I feel like it should go through in in any way that was supposed to happen and it maybe didn't start right away but maybe it was because it wasn't supposed to start right away like sometimes sometimes things with with God is he, he puts things in front of us, but it doesn't mean it's gonna happen right there and then. And I feel like I've been learning more and more that, that things happen, happen for a reason. And, and even if it's the smallest little things, they happen for a reason. And I feel like that was, you know, something that was yeah. maybe to help me, but also to help other people. Yeah. So last question on that front, like we still haven't had great news on the alpha front making it happen. Like how has all those setbacks that we've run into, whether it be not being allowed or writing letters to teachers and principals and getting students to sign documents to say we want this, like how have all those setbacks kept you going in this direction? I just keep the mindset that, that you know, God's there. He's going he's gonna to provide. He's going to do what he thinks is best. Because maybe what I think is best is not is not what is best, um, but just to trust in God that uh, He'll take care of it, and yeah. Cool, it's awesome. So if you're watching, continue to pray for us as we try to get this happening in your school. Um, but it's awesome, cool to hear that. What about you, Keegan? So I have one of my good friends, Ethan. Um, when our semester started up, like I guess like near the end of winter. Uh, I was in his gym class and I saw him and we started talking a bit and he was a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, started talking, we went to a movie together to watch Spider-Man because cool. we, we both hadn't seen him in so long so yeah. we thought we'd go together and it was fun. And uh, I felt like God was telling me to just try to grow closer with him and try to be near him more. And so uh, one of our friends brought him to one of the youth nights and I saw him there and I'm like, okay, that, that's really cool, he's, he's coming to church now. And uh, so fast forward, he's been there like two times, and then I find out in a conversation that he lives like almost an hour away. Yeah. And that he's been waiting after school like close to two hours just to come to church. Wow. I was like, wow, that's dedicated, especially for a man who like isn't religious in any aspect, mm -hmm. to want to stay that long just to come and be here with God. That's that's amazing. So I opened a uh, opened up my house to him. My grandparents said that it was cool for him to come over. So uh, on Wednesdays he would come over to my house and yeah. we'd eat dinner and then we'd go to church together and seeing him like interact. There's one night when he was just sitting there and he was answering all these questions about God. And I was just like, wow. Cool. And it's only been like three nights and he's like really engaged in this. And he's mm -hmm. just full in and it's, uh, it's amazing to see. And then last week I couldn't come here. And then I heard that he decided to go anyways, even though I wasn't here. And I was yeah. like, wow. That he just took that big step himself to come without me. And it's, it's just amazing. It's beautiful to see. Yeah, that's awesome. What would you say is like, one of the major reasons why you would even want him to be there with you on a Wednesday night? Just like seeing other people grow in God's word is just amazing for me. I, I love to see it and being a part of that, it just makes me feel so special and so good and like that I'm really serving God's purpose 
for just being here for him. And to think that all it took was for me to just ask him, hey, do you want to come with me? Do you want to come to a movie or do you want to come with my grandparents? Like yeah. it was just a very simple question and right. it, was, it was amazing. Yeah, I think sometimes we're surprised when people respond the way they do. I think we expect them always to reject like our questions. Uh, but often, more often than not, they're like, yeah, sure, what the heck, why not? Like, I'll, I'll try that thing out. Like, oh, what, you're playing basketball? Like, <laughs> that's it? Okay, sure. I think it's easier and people are going to respond better than we expect and we make it this big thing in our head, right? So that's been really cool and it's awesome that he's been out and, and kind of being a part of our community now. Super cool. Uh, what about you, Jake? Yeah, so I'm not sure if I can think of like a very like specific like time, but I know God's always told me in life to... Uh, um, just to be confident with literally anything, not just in my faith, but just in general in life to be confident and have courage and just to be myself. Um, and I think I've been told by like uh, people that like I actually do that pretty well. And I've also been told like I have like impacted like on like people's lives even in the youth group. And I just like I sit back and think like it's actually pretty cool to think that just me being myself has impacted people. Um, just in a way that like I may not know I'm hoping it's a good way but yeah. Um, yeah just to be confident and God promised me all the time just to be confident and be myself and just live out his faith and his word and I just think it's it's cool to think that people have actually been like impacted um, especially kids just here and to think that people might actually look up to I think it's something that I've never really realized until people mention it like you mentioned it to me a couple of times but right. it's just it's a really good feeling to know that um, God's just working in that way. Yeah, and like the thing that stands out there, right? And like it's not this big crazy thing that you're doing or like a, even like an alpha, let's say, that you feel God's prompting you, but it's just this this ability to respond to God's, uh, like being obedient to this idea that if I can just be confident in what God is calling me to do and who he's calling me to be and be this consistent voice and person in people's lives, you can actually make a difference. I think that's what God wants for us, right? Is just to have this more consistent life I think so often people like you guys probably think many friends even that just are always constantly living in highs or lows right and then when we live in this kind of middle ground where never we never get too crazy like super insanely crazy on that one side or super crazy down it's actually like a super different way to live mm -hmm. and it stands out just because you're like consistent and so then people are like why are you like this yeah. and it makes an impact because you're like well my confidence doesn't come from my situations or from who I am comes from who God says I am and what he speaks to me and, and what the Bible says and that's never changing. I was at work the other day and um, I'm always like trying to be like the brightest moon at work because yeah. people at Burger King aren't always the happiest to be there. Burger King, but, um, that's for Wednesday. <laughs> anyway, so I was there the other day and my like, um, one of my like bosses or like higher ups if you want to call it, um, looks at me and goes, why are you always so happy? <laughs> and I just, they're like, you're at Burger King. They're like, you're always such in like a good mood here. They're like, how is that even possible? And like, I didn't really think too much of it. And I just said like, I said, what's there to be sad about right now? I said, you're here, you're making money. I was like, you have a job. I was like, there's people that, are, I didn't say this, but like there's people that don't have jobs. Like what's there to be sad about right now? You're working here at a non-busy place. You could be working at McDonald's. So, sorry, <laughs> by the way, sorry. Yeah. that's kind of a diss, but yeah. Anyways, I just think it's like, like, I, pr I could have taken that opportunity, and I'm, I'm hoping I'll get asked that again, but I could have taken that opportunity to just straight up say, God's good, mm -hmm. what's wrong right now? Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. So, uh, a question that maybe not we didn't talk about earlier, but all three of you, um, like, serve on a Sunday, on a Wednesday, on a Tuesday here at the church. Like, what would prompt you guys to want to serve here at the church? One main thing that I just started doing was uh, the worship team. And the reason why I, I chose to, to do this was because God gave us, us talents for, his, uh, for a reason. And I feel like I can use that talent to um, show people about God and to, and to worship and be, um, just be someone that they look up to. And um, not like in like a, oh, they're gonna praise me, but they're gonna praise God in the way that I am right. worshiping God. Cool. So that's that's one of the reasons why yeah. I, I chose to, yeah. to serve. So. Yeah, I think I choose to uh, serve. I was actually gonna say something similar to that. Um, something my dad always told me as a kid, or I'm pretty sure it was him, to always to use our gifts to honor God. And because we're all given gifts even if we don't think so. 
and something that I do, um, uh, well, one, I try to be, I tried to be a leader during uh, junior high, but uh, work kind of took up from that. But either way, I still try to like be a leader here as much as I can. And even if it means like coming here and helping out like three, four hours before coming here right after school on a Wednesday, I think that's pretty big. And um, also just um, on the worship team as well. Um, I recently just started getting back into drumming, which I think is a big thing. And one of the gifts, especially, like I said before, that I can use to honor God um, in many ways. Um, so yeah, that's probably one of the things. Yeah. Ian, why do you help out? Uh, well, I help out in the, the cabin, which is like the, the smaller kids, and I just, I love to see them grow. It's, it's so amazing. A lot of them look up to me and a few of the other leaders too. And then just to see how much that they take in from each lesson, like when we do like a small group, we'll like talk. And to see how much that they've learned, it's just, it's awe-inspiring. It's, mm-hmm. it's amazing. Cool. And then seeing that re- reaction, like th- they kind of want to do all this stuff and seeing them want to learn more. Is, is amazing, it's super cool. And I heard someone say years ago that all good thoughts are just God thoughts. Because uh, in, James, um, in James 1, it actually says that every good and perfect gift comes from God, comes from above. So, you know, every good thing that we think of is actually just God, ne- like really speaking to us in one way or the other. Um, it brings good to those around us, it brings good things. And, and I think that, you know, for us sometimes it's not necessarily a voice that we're hearing that is like, is this Holy Spirit or God? Maybe it's a feeling. Like, I don't know about you guys, but for me, I just have this sense in my heart, this like, I, I just know that this is not me. I did not come up with this. Like, I did not choose to say this to somebody. Or I did not, God is not putting this word in me for somebody because, you know, I'm super smart. Like, it has to, it can't be just me. Um, so maybe for you guys, is it like, when you feel like God may be speaking to you or the Holy Spirit, um, is there like uh, how do you know that's happening like is there a feeling that you have does that make sense that kind of question it does uh i find i actually felt it exactly when keegan talked about how ethan um came on his own for the first time i felt it right then i was gonna say something but it was like this like shiver and like kind of like wave that came over my body and i felt it and i kind of just like sat there and i was like whoa but i tried to like keep like content but um and it's the same feeling I knew it was God because it's the same feeling and I have it a lot um a lot actually in worship like I was talking about before like I feel it so much during worship and just like even moments where like I hear about like God doing crazy things I'm like wow like this that's actually just insane and it just that's one way I can like feel it it's it's not something I can really like describe though it's just like it's like I knew like it was it's just like it was kind of like a shiver like type feeling but more (laughs) I don't know it's kind of weird but it's something that um at least like I know for sure God's actually like speaking or I at least like I can feel God's presence that's why I like to like define it for me at least I'm sure it's different for everyone yeah yeah Yeah, like if it sticks with you and like it's like that thought is like stuck in your mind you can't get it out like I feel like that's when you know that it's God like if you were to hear something and kind of like pushed it away thinking you know what I, I can't do that right now that's not good it's gonna come back like it's if it's God it's not gonna stop if it's a thought that you might have had that you know fades away within like a few weeks or maybe even like a month and it's probably just your own thought but if it really sticks with you for a long time and that's when you know that it's God trying to tell you to do something and that it, it'll be empowering like you can tell kind of like, like Jake said you get like that feeling inside you're like you know what this is God I have to do this and again you might not always like recognize it or even want to recognize it the first time it like takes a bit of like reoccurring from God to actually like sit with us. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, um, sometimes for me it's just like, it's kind of like, it's not something you are waiting for, it's something that just kind of like pops out, or like like when I was saying um, in service, it just pops out to me. It's like, oh my gosh, I can relate to this, not even trying to, but I can relate to what what they're saying. So that kind of, that's when I like know that it's not just me. Yeah, yeah, definitely, right? Like you can read the same passage of scripture 50 times and the 50th time you're like, wait, what? That's what this means? Why does all of a sudden make sense? Or someone says something and it's like, boom. It's like, wow. And you know, like, I didn't just come up with that because I've already thought this way, but this is a whole new thought that just feels like it's clicked, right? Um, I think a couple of things I'll add to like, how do we discern between the Holy Spirit's voice and our own voice? I think number one, and, and first, uh, Thessalonians, I always struggle with that word. Um, it talks about how we have to test everything against scripture, right? So, you know, when we're thinking like, oh, is this, is this me? Is this God? If it aligns with what the Bible would say, then I think that's a clear 
a clear answer for us, like, yeah, this is definitely from God, right? Like, if we're like, is God telling me I need to murder somebody? Probably not, right? Like, we can test scripture very quickly and see that that is not it. Because most of the time, we can know that, right? And that's kind of like, we were talking about this earlier, but like, when you have a friend, when you first get to know them, it can be a little awkward, it can be a little tense, like, you don't really know, can I say this? Can I talk about this? But the more you get to know them, then they just have this ability, like, they come over to your house, they can open your fridge, and like, no one bats an eye, right? Um, same thing with God. The more we, we have a relationship with him, the more we focus on being with him, the more we read our Bibles, um, then it just comes to become natural for us to test things against scripture because we, now it's in our heart. Now we know it. And that's why we need to fill ourselves with good things often, right? Um, so we can test things against scripture to, to dis- discern between the Holy Spirit's voice and our voice. I think you guys, you kind of mentioned it and you've, you've told us, you've told me, you know, else other times like we can seek wise counsel you talk you talked about your grandpa like when you have questions about the bible you talk to your grandpa and you can talk to your father and you talk to your parents too like you were telling us yes, you were talking about your mom about some of these questions and like that's really important to have wise counsel to go to to make sure that it's not just you coming up with these answers because there's probably going to be some selfishness in there of like i want it to be this so i'm going to believe it's this but when you have an outside voice and when they truly love you and can tell you like yeah, you're right, or you're really wrong here. Like, that is love, right? And that's what wise people do for us. Um, And you said it, like, I think it was a great thing. You know, does this help just me? Or does this help for, like, a lot of people or somebody else? It's a great question to ask ourselves, I think, when it comes to us trying to to discern between Holy Spirit's voice and our voice. Um, You know, I, I think we'll wrap up this conversation. I just want to remind us that, hey, we are not the saviors. Our job is to sow. Our job is to plant as many good seed as we possibly can so that the Savior can do his work and, and, and do that job of helping people. Like our job is to do as many positive things and plant good seeds for our friends and our neighbors and our siblings, our coworkers. Like it doesn't just have to happen by serving in a ministry or uh, volunteering at a special place. It can happen every single day, wherever we are. We are called to love God so that we have this ability to love those around us well, so that we can be disciples who make disciples. So we can take that like that stress off of us of feeling like we are responsible for the people around us and that it, it all relies on us because at the end of the day, it doesn't at all. God just chooses to use us. And that's the beautiful thing that he chooses to use us in our brokenness and our selfishness and our human nature because he wants to partner with us to bring his kingdom to earth and that's his desire and he gives us the holy spirit to help correct us and help direct us and and to give us words of wisdom so that we can help the people that he's placed in our lives because they're in our life for a reason i think that was one of those things that helped me was kind of realizing that i can be confident and i can be bold because when i was a kid i was i was afraid like i've shared with the youth many times like I did karate, I had to quit because I was afraid of screaming out words with the whole room because I was just so shy. But as I've grown up and become like more in tune with the Holy Spirit, I've realized that I have this power available to me to be bold and courageous. And I don't have to be that shy person that maybe I am naturally. And I, I can be confident in who I am like you were saying and that that can be a difference maker knowing that I have this spirit inside of me to lead me and guide me. And that he's the one doing the work at the end of the day, not me. But my job is to be obedient to what he's asking me to do today. So a life of purpose is available to all of us. It's not this hard thing. God's not looking for us to be amazing. He's looking for us to be available. And, and this is our challenge for you this week. One thing that you could do to change um, how you look at your week and how you look at your days. The challenge is on your way to work or on your way to school or wherever you find yourself throughout the day to spend at least 30 seconds. This is the, the easy way to do this is 30 seconds. I would recommend maybe a couple of minutes, but before you start your day, wherever it is, maybe it's in your car or on a bike or on your walk or in a bus on your way to that place, take 30 seconds to just uh, align your heart with God. Take a moment to pray. Have a conversation in your mind with God to say, God, um, reveal to me how I can be obedient today. Uh, ask him, you start, start praying for a coworker specifically or a, a sibling or a person that uh, is in your class. Do something, pray, uh, and just ask God to give you guidance and how you can do something for him in those moments. And I'm going to tell you, you're probably going to be, you're going to probably start feeling those God prompts of um, him revealing things to you as you allow him the space to speak to you. 
I think you'll see a big shift in your lives. So thank you guys so much for being a part of this conversation. And I hope that you guys feel encouraged no matter what stage of life you're in, wherever you find yourself, whatever situation you're facing, that you feel encouraged that you can go and be obedient to God wherever you are. Thank you so much, John, Mark, and students for sharing those stories of how God is working in your life, how, how you are actually hearing his voice and doing something about it. I hope that everybody today was encouraged to step up and to see what trusting God can actually do in your life. We're so glad that each and every one of you has joined us today, and I really do. I pray that you were filled with hope, and I pray that you were encouraged, and I also hope that you come back next week. Have a great week.